Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name's Old Gamer Joe, bringing you a review today of Bright Memory Infinite Gold Edition on the Nintendo Switch. Bright Memory Infinite is an action-packed first-person shooter from developer FYQD and publisher Playism. Taking place in the year 2036, you'll play as Shelia, an agent who works for an organization known as the SRO. It's supposed to be an off night for Shelia, but as soon as she lays down, the thing we all dread happens. Yes, her boss calls her into work for an emergency situation. The weather in the world is going crazy causing satellites to act up, and after an unexpected crash landing, Shelia becomes entangled in a much deeper and honestly pretty convoluted plot. The writing is not as concise and tight as it could have been, but I do have to say there are some decent voice performances in this game, and I was attached enough to the lead character, though this game is very brief at two hours, so you don't get a lot of time to become attached to much of anything. The developer is willing to explore some interesting topics throughout the script and go into supernatural territory, but it does honestly fall a bit flat and it's not going to be the main draw of this title. That's going to be the moment to moment gameplay which is full of action. Normally here I would begin to tell you about that gameplay but I do have to take a second to acknowledge that this game is really pretty and technically impressive for a Switch title. I say this because we have bashed on plenty of bad performing Switch games on this channel and it feels good to be able to have a victory here. More on that later though. This game plays like a lot of other first person shooters. You can aim down the sights, blast at enemies, but there is a little bit more of a focus on the melee combat. Everything else that you would expect out of a first person shooter is here. You can of course sprint to move along the maps faster. You can double jump in this game and climb plenty of walls too. Shelia also has a really cool gravity defined attack with her left hand that she can use where enemies can be trapped in the air or pulled towards you. The game also features a dedicated block button and the cool thing about that is it can deflect enemies bullets back towards them and kill them. While there aren't a ton of weapons in the game, each gun does have unique ammo you can switch between to fire different types of bullets towards enemies as well. Outside of the aforementioned wall climbing, you can, yes, run across walls and jump off of them to reach otherwise unreachable areas too. The fundamental gameplay feels really sound throughout out, and there are also some upgrades, including being able to improve your exo unit arm, your light blade, and your weapons. Anything that you upgrade will carry over to another run if you so wish. There are three difficulty options out of the gate, and one of them is unlockable, so at least there's a little bit of incentive to get better at this game because you'll need to beat that third difficulty to unlock the very challenging fourth. Overall, I thought the mix of gunplay and melee combat was really effective. I enjoyed it. Right memory will feel very straightforward and scripted at times. You'll need to clear all the enemies in order to advance. You're never going to feel lost. There's not much exploration to be done here. It's mainly action piece after action piece. The game does switch things up from time to time, whether you're on foot blasting away at foes from a distance with a sniper gun, or you're in a vehicle mowing down waves of enemies that way. The game even features a stealth section, which I'm normally not the biggest fan of, but because the production values of this game are so great and all of the animations are a joy to watch, I really even liked that part of the game. If you are a fan of action movies, you'll feel like you're a part of one in Bright Memory Infinite. I should also mention, I suppose another little bit of incentive to play again is the fact that there are some badass costumes for your lead character, some different skins for your assault rifle, shotgun, handgun, your sniper rifle, and your melee weapon that you can go through, so that was kind of a nice touch. What steals the show and really blew me away, based on the fact that this game is running on Switch, is the visual quality of this game. It looks excellent docked, and it actually looks not half bad, even handheld. The environments are kind of gray and green and not the most colorful that you'll come across, but boy, they do look nice. The cutscenes, again, look straight out of an action movie. They're a joy to watch. The frame rate was solid. I didn't even experience much in the way of frame rate drops, so credit the developer here. They've really mastered the Switch hardware and done a great job of bringing this game to the little portable hybrid. That said, not everything is perfect in bright memory. Unfortunately, I did come across across a few errors and crashes. Only one of them completely crashed the game, and actually it was kind of weird because I crashed at a checkpoint, and the game just picked up from that point anyway, so I didn't lose any progress, which was nice. Other errors were just gray blocks that would pop up from time to time, and then they would go away, so the game would continue working. 
ultimately they weren't a huge deal. And just as the game looks like a movie, it also sounds like one with plenty of big explosions, the great voice acting that I mentioned earlier. Yes, the script does fall flat, which I guess you could also say is true for some action movies, but ultimately I thought the game looked and sounded great and it played well too, making this a really fun first person shooter on the Nintendo Switch. It's not perfect, I did run into those errors. Unfortunately, the biggest flaw with this game though is that it's just over too quick. I know there is a bit of incentive to go back, you have the higher difficulties, the different costumes which look great, but at the end of the day it is a two hour campaign. Yes, you can try to better your score, you can try to do better on different runs, but I still wish this was more in the four to five hour range because I was hungry for more of this great action. Still at $19.99, if you want a cool, portable, on-the-go first-person shooter that looks and runs great on Switch, I would say check out Bright Memory Infinite just for the fact that it's one of the more technically impressive looking games I've played on Switch, and that alone makes it worth checking out. Just don't expect it to last you very long. I managed to escape the aircraft. I can see a massive black hole up ahead. We thank you so much for supporting clickbait-free content here at I Dream of Indie. We can't possibly make it without you. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors that support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skeptism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, Sea Coil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.